What's up, guys? Void here, coming back at you all with another 10 underrated commander cards. As you all know, I have been doing this series for a while. Basically, I take 10 cards that I feel are either undervalued, underplayed, underrated, any of the above, and I kind of shed some light onto why I think they're pretty good in commander, why they have potential. They may not just hit it out of the park here with these cards, they may not be that good. So let's get it started here with the first card, which is Terrain Generator. A land originally from Nemesis, but it's been reprinted a couple times through the Jace vs. Chandra dual decks. It's not too terribly expensive. It's pretty cheap, but what it does is it's actually pretty good. It can tap to add colorless to your mana pool, but it can also pay to and tap it to put a basic land card from your hand onto the battlefield tap. You'd be surprised as to how many decks just stock up on all these basic lands. I mean, we're talking about the Gitrog monster, we're talking about Omnath Locus of Rage, maybe even Kineos and Tyro, uh, that group hug deck that has some sort of synergy with landfall effects. It's actually pretty solid when you consider the fact that if you have all these lands, they're just going to be dead in your hand. You don't want to have to discard cards later in the game. So why not just reduce the total number of cards in your hand right now? Also, you are still technically ramping. So you're paying two mana, technically three, since you're also tapping this, to basically just ramp up one land. So the land does come into play tapped. It is going to basically force you to tap out that turn, especially earlier on in the game. But later on, it's definitely going to pay off because you're going to have just more of a land presence. And yeah, eventually this isn't even going to be a factor in certain circumstances where you just have no basic lands at all. But really where I see this working, monocolor decks, decks where you're pretty much forced to just make the most out of basic lands because there really isn't too many non-basics that are really going to be worth it more so than a typical basic land. I still think it's a pretty solid card. Then we have Phyrexian Portal. Just a 3 mana artifact that sits on the field and anytime you want to you get to just pay 3 mana and basically your opponent gets to look at the top 10 cards of your library and they get to separate it into two face down piles. So this could be in any order, they can put 1 card in one pile, 9 cards in the other pile, or they could put five cards in one pile and five cards in the other. The whole point here though is that they get to choose which pile looks like what. So they could put all your good stuff in one pile and just hope that you pick that pile to remove. So that's basically what you have to do after they're done picking the piles. You have to pick a certain pile to remove from the game. The cards are exiled. You have to really be careful putting this in a deck where you're so dependent on combos and alternate win cons because this can really just kill your game. But overall though, I think it's very fun. I like cards like Factor Fiction for the same exact reason. It sort of it allows for more interaction between players normally. It's just, you know, tap to attack and that's as far as the interaction goes in most games. But with this card, you're giving your opponents the ability to choose your fate. But technically you are still deciding. It's just you don't know. You do get the chance of once you are done exiling one of the piles, you get to look at the other pile and choose one card from that pile, and then that's the card that you keep. The others get shuffled into your deck. So really all this is is just risky, but I think it's fun enough to see some play in Commander. If you're a really risky player, I could see this in something like a red deck, sort of a deck that is used to taking chances, something like that. And then we have Cleansing from the Dark, and this is basically a more fair version of a card that already exists, pretty much Armageddon, but this is three white mana symbols, so keep that in mind, it doesn't have the most flexibility there. But what it does is it destroys all lands, however, any player can just pay one life to save a land. So basically your opponents are going to have to decide whether or not they want to lose all that life or lose some of their lands and lose a little bit of life, which is what I feel like a lot of people are going to end up doing, like maybe just get rid of maybe two or three lands and then just take the rest. And then you're just gonna have people that just take all of the life loss, so you do have that. I rarely think people are going to just destroy all their lands unless they absolutely have to. So that's the good thing about this card. I think it's a little bit more fair than Armageddon. Armageddon, in a lot of circumstances, is an automatic win. You can always lose a life and protect your land, so that's a good thing too. And then we have Glory. So the good thing about Glory here is that once it's in your graveyard, you get to pay the mana there, and basically all of your creatures gain protection of a specific color until end of turn. So you can keep paying this over and over again. It doesn't exile itself, so that's a good thing about it. And then we have Stunt Double. 
from Conspiracy to Take the Crown, the Flash clone card that, honestly, I felt like would see a lot more play than what it does. The only reason why I feel like it wouldn't f see more play is just for the simple fact that, and I know versatility, it's awesome, it's why Phyrexian Metamorph sees probably the most play out of any clone in this format, and you also have Clever Impersonator, which sees a ton of play as well. But with this card, you get Flash, which is probably the biggest head-scratcher for me. So, I don't know if it's just people feeling comfortable with just those two clones in the format, when in reality, I would actually be willing to push it to just three main clones in this format. If you're going to be playing a huge uh, blue deck or an ETB deck that loves ETBs like Rune of the Hidden Realm or Brago, things like that, this is far from a terrible inclusion. In fact, I would almost be willing to consider this an auto-include. But it's always going to come down to the fact that it can only copy creatures, which is always going to be a downside there. I mean, I love versatility, and I love the fact that Phyrexia Metamorph can copy artifacts too, and I love the fact that Clever Impersonator can also copy Planeswalkers. I think that's pretty cool. But, I mean, this is Flash. I mean, there's so many cool shenanigans that you can do with Flash in this format. It's a very underrated keyword, and I think people always sort of overlook the timing of cards. And they don't really understand the impact and how that versatility really helps you win games. But overall, I think it's probably the least underrated card on this list. I think it's probably the most well-known. A lot of people know its power. Pretty good card. Next, we have Empress Galena. Cool thing about her is you get to pay two blue mana and tap her to gain control of target legend or legendary permanent. The funny thing is it's pretty much just legendary permanent now because they changed it a long time ago. So basically, this isn't like other sort of effects where you would have to keep her tapped and you would keep control of the creature you wanted to. This is just permanent. You get to gain control of a legendary permanent, which now applies to, I believe, Planeswalkers now. I could be wrong, but I believe they are technically considered legendary permanents now. The fact that you could take someone's legendary permanent means that you can take someone's commander and that is incredibly insane the fact that you could just hey i need my commander here i need my voltron commander to actually win the game uh sorry buddy i'm just gonna gain control of it and there isn't an end of turn clause here where you would have to give it back this is super powerful definitely love her if you're playing some sort of blue deck i'm actually surprised this hasn't seen more play then we move on to the next one tomorrow azami's familiar Whenever you would draw a card, instead you get to look at the top three cards of your library. Choose one, put them into your hand, and then put the other two onto the bottom of your library. That right there is pretty good. I wouldn't say it's Consecrated Sphinx level of card draw manipulation, but whenever you get to draw a card and just look at the top three, it means that you're going to be looking through your deck a lot quicker. And while it isn't technically going to give you extra card draw, looking at the top three and getting to decide is arguably better than just drawing two cards. I mean, yeah, in card advantage, you're not gaining anything extra. The top of your deck, just doing that, I mean, that's super insane. So it's good for combo decks. You want to get the cards you need. You want to get the pieces that you need for your combos. And a card like this is also going to help with that. Would I consider playing this over Sensei's Divining Top, over Sylvan Libraries? Cards that already allow you to go three deep without investing any more mana? Probably not, but if you're really desperate and you're playing on a budget, this might be the card for you. The next we have Insidious Dreams. For four mana, you get to discard any number of cards in your hand and basically look through your library and tutor up that many cards and then put them on the top of your library in any order which is just insane i love vampiric tutor i love those tutor effects where you essentially yeah you don't get to put the card right into your hand but you get to put it at the top of your library now the only downside to this is that typically putting them on the top of your library in any order it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to draw them quick enough but you still get to choose what cards you draw in which order that you draw them so if you are playing a combo deck and you just need two pieces we'll just put your two pieces there on the top two of your library and there you go so it is a pretty risky card but i absolutely love it i love the artwork too by john avon i really love that but it's a pretty good card i'm actually surprised it hasn't been mentioned more often in this format should see a little bit more play then the second to last card here is Lethal Vapors. The four man enchantment just sits on the field. Whenever a creature would enter the battlefield, destroy it. And any player may pay zero mana to destroy Lethal Vapors. However, if they do that, they have to skip their next turn. 
which is just hilarious. So this card might as well just read, pay four mana, someone skips their next turn, because that's essentially what it is for a lot of players. I mean, creatures are just how you win. This isn't going to really hurt anybody with an already established board state. However, this is going to definitely be a funny card to play right after a board wipe. And especially if you're in a group where there are maybe one or two other control decks out there, you might actually be able to leverage with them. Just say, hey, you know what? We're not playing creatures. Why do we care about this card? Let's just leave it out there. Basically force them to have to skip their next turn. Whoever's playing creatures, I mean. Pretty funny card. I like it. And then the last card we have here is Croson Restorer. You get to tap it to untap a land. The cool thing about this though is that once you trigger Threshold, which isn't that hard to do in Commander, you just have to have seven cards in your graveyard and you have Threshold. You get to tap it to untap three lands. So holy crap, that is insane. All on a three mana little mana dork that just sits on the field. Not going to draw too much attention. But on tapping three target lands just for having seven or more cards in your graveyard, that's insane. Pretty powerful. It is a druid, it's not an elf, so I mean it might change if you were just thinking about putting it in an elf deck, who knows. But other than that though, if you're playing this huge creature deck, or you're playing anything where you just need a ton of mana, why not just ramp up three more? I mean that's essentially what it's doing, it's going to tap for three mana basically. Or more, because you do get to untap three lands, and you could be untapping bounce lands. You know, you could be untapping Temple of the False God, Ancient Tomb, anything that can tap for more than one mana. Who knows, Gaius Cradle, Cabal Coffers, whatever you decide to untap with this, it's going to be pretty solid. So, definitely surprised I haven't seen this more often in this format for what it does. There are a lot of graveyard-based decks that could definitely take advantage of this card. So anyway guys, that's going to do it for this list of 10 underrated commander cards. Let me know about cards you think are underrated in this format. I definitely want to hear what you guys think. But anyway, you all take it easy. Void here signing off. You all have a wonderful day.